They're right there. How about right there? Yep, right out of here at 8 o'clock. Good. Perfect. Right behind it. They're looking at it. There you go. He's on it. He's on it. Oh, he charged it. There he oh, is. he ate it. Nice. This is a great fly. For 120 years, Chatham Lighthouse has stood silent sentinel over the fabled beaches of Cape Cod, a true birthplace of saltwater sport fishing in America. Hello everybody, I'm Andy Mill, and today we're going to be fly fishing for striped bass, which has made a remarkable comeback over the years. For barely 20 years ago, New England's striper fishery was in a total collapse with a combination of pollution, the destruction of its natural habitat, and overfishing from commercial as well as recreational anglers had taken its toll. Well, fortunately, a strict bag quota and a massive environmental cleanup initiated 10 years ago sparked an incredible return of the striped bass. Well, today, this fishery here in Cape Cod is incredible and unique to this area is sight fishing over sandy flats, Florida Keys style. Chris Benson is the third generation of his family to ply the waters off Cape Cod for striped bass. About 10 years ago, Chris and his father, Bob, took what they had learned while flats fishing in Florida and applied it to the skinny waters off Monomoy Island, where Nantucket Sound meets the Atlantic. By going where no fly rodders had gone before, they literally pioneered a new fishery that has since become a booming family business. This is so pretty. You just never see this anywhere fishing. No, it's just except like, down like this. So you have all these oyster flats that are dry. No, it's a special place. It's really different. Crystal clear water, two to four feet of water, sight fishing to them. Do you find these fish more active when it gets later in the season, colder versus the hotter summer months? Uh, June and July are some of our top months. And then you get into August, which is probably the hottest month, and they, they will get picky. And then now in September, they'll start to turn back on. So it's the real hot weather can I think they just get real lethargic. Has this gotten pretty popular, the sight fishing? Oh yeah, it's, it's great. I mean, it's become a destination fishery. Very similar to Florida bone fishing. Right? Exactly. Same type of fishing, you see as many fish, if not more. And What kind of crowds do you see out here? I mean, are your flats getting more and more pressure and it's hard to find your own spot? Not necessarily the flat. Some of the other fishing areas, they get a lot of pressure, but the flats, in the middle of the summer on weekends, you'll see more boats, but it's not to a point where it's crowded. No fist fights yet, huh? No, I'm still surprised there aren't more people out here. Chris, what's that out there? You going there see at it, 11? See that color there? Yeah, give that a shot. I'm going to try that. There you go. Yep. Right on him. He's turned. There he is. Got, got him. him. Nice. Nice shot. That's a nice fish, too. That was very similar to bone fishing. You know, I let him swim up on it and then gave it a couple nice little tweaks and he ate it. Did he? He jumped right on it? Yeah, because when I was retrieving it very quickly, I could see him, but, you know, he was still back a little right. bit. Right. So you slowed it down some? Yeah, I just sort of dropped it a little bit. Nice. Classic shot. You know, even though the sun's out, it's hard to see them before they get a little bit too close to the boat. Pretty, aren't they? Boy, wow, he, did he inhale it or He what? inhaled it. Look, it's right down. That'll pop right out. Pretty sharp, these dorsal fins. Yeah, they'll uh, they'll stick you. You gotta be careful of them. 
It's almost like the makings of a rooster fish. You know where they have the, uh, the spines that stick up? Well, there's no doubt he wanted to eat that. Yeah, I just got to... You have any hemostats with you? Yeah, I got some pliers here. Oh, I cut the fly off. The green machine. It's been a good fly. Pretty fish. Now they're saying your father's talking about. They say uh, uh, a fish that's natural and hasn't uh, interbred with other species has a has a direct line all the way through its body. Correct. It's not broken. Right. We'll, we'll catch some that they'll be broken and so forth. And I've heard different theories about it. Some people have said that they they have interbred, and other people have said that. That's just a characteristic just of their, the way that their it happens. Coloring. Huh. Beautiful. Just give them a little breath of air here. It's funny, striped bass, now these guys are a member of the bass family? Yes. But they don't jump. How sacrilegious no, is that? <laughs> I wish they jumped. That's one thing that they're missing. There he goes. Great. Beautiful. Good job. Good cast. Thank you. Rather be lucky than good. <laughs> I like your eyes. You've got great eyes. <laughs> well, it takes a while to pick them up, but let's get another one. Like most New Englanders, Chris and Bob Benson grew up fishing for trophy-sized stripers with heavy conventional gear. But their shared love for bone fishing in the Florida Keys is what prompted them to try and duplicate that unique style of fishing closer to home. My dad started fishing here 50 years ago. The old style, conventional, throwing squid plugs and squids and tin squids and things like that in the Cape Cod Canal. And me as a youngster, I get into it and gosh, now we've got my son working as a professional guide so it all come together pretty nice. Well, our, our love of flat style fishing goes back to Florida, of course, where we learned how to do it. And after doing it a few years and, and having a good time, we bought a flats boat. We brought it back here for the summertime because we couldn't be at the, in Florida for a vacation here and there. And so we started using it. And, pulling around these flats around Cape Cod, and it was amazing how many fish we saw. And this is back about 10 years ago as the species came back uh, in pretty good numbers. So we've been watching it now for 10 years, and for the last five we've built a, a real nice business around it. Uh, we employ a dozen guides that professionally go out there on almost a daily basis. Uh, the store here and everything we've done for the community, it's really fun. People respect the fly fishermen because it's basically a catch and release program. Uh, most fly fishermen, 85% of them release their catch, so it doesn't impact the fishery uh, in terms of a kill. So that helps. What is it like for you to see your son out there guiding? You well, know, having a special relationship with the fish uh, as your father gave you this passion and now you've handed it on. Well, I think it's very rewarding for any father to see his son carry along with the same type of thing that he loves to do. Uh, Chris is an excellent guide, as is uh, all of our guides. And it is, it's a special feeling to see someone go out there and, and do very well at what they love to do. It must have been a great childhood growing up on these waters, you yeah, know, it was. striper fishing. We used to striper fish in Cape Cod Bay uh, when I was young. We'd go out at daybreak and we'd troll wire lines with lead head jigs and bounce them off the bottom. That's how, that was pretty much how everybody fished for them. You know, we didn't have these the numbers of them that we have now up on these flats, so it was a different ball game back then. When did you realize you wanted to become a guide? Because obviously your family's been in the, it's had a close relationship with stripers for three generations now. Exactly. My grandfather used to fish for stripers, uh, my father, myself, and it's just, just the love of the sport. It's just been a way that I can be out on the water every day and still, uh, still make a living. They're right on the fly. You're gonna get one right there. There's about six fish right behind it. Get the ones kind of before they spook. There you go. Oh, one's on it. Right behind it. Oh, he charged it. He oh, he ate it, nice. This is a great fly. You Good know, job. You're, you're right, when in doubt, take it away from them. Yeah, sometimes if you speed it up, their instincts turn on and Instead of following it, they'll... Okay. They're all nice, nice sized fish, aren't they? They are. The big ones are mixed in. They're tougher to catch. Yeah, usually they are, these, aren't they? These medium fish will usually beat them to it. 
pretty fish. Yeah, they're great. And they're fun in this couple feet of water. Chris, this is so cool. I mean, you know, catching fish is, is wonderful, but to be able to sight fish and, and cast your specific fish is just the best. I, I love this. Our silent stock of stripers was witnessed by a pleasant surprise. These hundreds of seals inhabit Cape Cod, feeding off the vast supply of this area's bass. Oh, there's one right there. And then behind him, there's a whole bunch. Some good ones back here. Oh, big ones, looking at him. He's on He's it. On. He, he hit it. it. Nice fish. Oh, boy, he jumped. Woo! <laughs> They're not supposed to jump. He I came was, right out. I thought that was bottom. <laughs> All of a sudden, it's moving. It's like, wow, this is a great fish. Yeah, he like uh, stuck his head out of the water to eat that fly, didn't he? Yeah, he did. That's the key to an accurate cast. If you were five, ten feet off on those fish, you wouldn't have caught them. You put it within a couple feet of them, and stripped, stripped right it, away, and they turned right on it. And that's the key to this game. Yeah, that's a nice fish. They came out of about a foot and a half of water, didn't they? Yeah, they did. Missed them. Good job, oh, he's Chris. He's got a belly on him, doesn't he? How big do you think that fish is? About Eight, six, seven, huh? Yeah, right around six pounds, seven pounds. Sweetness. Good job. It gets pretty fast paced, doesn't it? Yeah, it when does. When it starts to happen. And when they come by, sometimes they just pour through here. Beating the water into a frenzy. I like it. What started out as a great trip unexpectedly got even better. Adding a bluefish and a false albacore to the day's bag gave me my first northern grand slam. Unfortunately, I never got to cast anything like this monster 71 pound striper that was only two pounds off the IGFA all tackle world record when it was caught back in 1972. But Bob Luce, the angler who caught it, offered to show me how it used to be done. A commercial striper fisherman for more than 40 years for the last five years, Bob has been guiding recreational anglers, but he still gets a wistful look in his eye when he tells me how things used to be and will never be again. Although stripers have made a remarkable recovery, strict conservation measures literally forced him to change his way of life. Fortunately, the same uncanny fish-finding skills that once helped him market fish now helps others enjoy this fragile resource in a more eco-friendly fashion. So Bob, what's happening here? Well, looks like a lot of bait coming down through. I don't see any fish on top yet, but if there's, if there's fish here, they will show, you know. And you're saying bait because of what because you're seeing of the with the birds? Because the birds are Where do you typically find the stripers then? On this side, the smoother <coughs> side of the They're rip? In, they lay in the back of the rip, just past that outside curl there, you know? Like right where it just starts to break. Uh -huh. They stay on the position there so they can pick up the bait when it comes through. So the way they'll come It'll be the deeper wave. on that side, you know, so uh -huh. they can lay behind the bank. And um, when the bait comes through, they grab it. But simple as that. Now, a lot of times you'll just false cast and strip and look and... Right, right. A lot of times you'll cast in there, just leave the line in the water and well, sort of jig the fly. Yep, yep. Until we find them and, you know, they'll have a certain place that they'll stack up. They'll gang up in one spot, you know. And then you can work them over. And that's when you get in and start rating, rating yeah. the pie, right? Yep. I'm looking forward to this. What's your average size fish out here? Uh, this time of year here, they're mixed. But if you if you go for uh, you know legal size keepers and stuff, over 30 inches. 30 anyway. inches. And you're liable to get one 20 pounds. But it's really? Quite common, yeah, with no problem. After a lifetime spent working the fertile waters off Cape Cod and Nantucket, it's not surprising that Bob Luce has an almost magical sixth sense for finding stripers. Unlike the flats, where the angler can usually see the fish he's casting to, offshore striper fishing is more like prospecting. 
Bob's eyes scan the edges of the rip currents, looking for the slightest hint that something could be lurking beneath. And his hunches are seldom wrong. The key to getting these fish to bite is allowing the fly to drift as naturally as possible through the strike zone, while imparting just enough movement to make the fly appear like a struggling bait fish. And there's no mistaking the strike. Stripers thump their prey much like a snook. Once they're hooked, they use their stout bodies and broad tail for leverage against the swift current and can put up a terrific fight for a fish their size. I mean, that's the first fish I've had peel off backing like this. <laughs> Go to uh, Nantucket, baby. Get the hand line for Andy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is much better. Either it's a bigger fish or... Oh, you're getting tired? No. It's amazing your sense of where the fish are. Like you were saying, pay attention. They're, it's going to happen. I just know. I'm doing it a hundred times. I guess after 40 years, you yeah, should have a pretty feel for these ribs. <laughs> Give up. You better get in another profession if you don't learn by then. But I learn something new all the time, new spots. But this white tackle has allowed me to do with fish places like this where there's virtually no water for trolling with wire line, you know uh -huh. I mean? Shallower and water. it isn't that the fish are not here. They like these type of places. You can see how the water gets dark over there. Right. Because of the drop off there. Mm -hmm. But the fish just properly with wire line, you, you can't do it. You're in the bottom. You're hitting the bottom all the time. But this tackle here allows you to do it. And obviously the fish like to get up in the flat here then. Huh? They like it, sure. It's like any place else. This is like a flat in the middle of the ocean. Right. right. Except it's just deeper, a little bit deeper, and you really don't get to see them unless you were in the tower. If you're in the tower, you'd see them pretty good. How big is this? 20. 20 like, pounder? Yeah. So you count one of these on four pound test? Yeah. How yeah. long did that take? 20 minutes. We were very careful, you know. And Keep coming. I always get worried in this position with the fly and this, the face of the fish is pointing toward you. Sometimes yeah. you see that fly come flying out. He's got it down his throat. Back up, Andy, I'll get him. Not yet, huh? Woo! 50. <laughs> oh, that's a good fish, huh? Yeah. How heavy do you think this one is? 19, 20 19, pounds. 20 pounds. Good job, Bob. Again, like this. Come over here, stand with me. From commercial fisherman to a fly fisherman. That's it. To get a better feel for the way stripers used to be fished, Bob suggested I try hand lining, which turned out to be a lot more exciting than I expected. With virtually no stretch in the 600 pound test hand line, a big fish could literally jerk you off your feet. So this is, this is where you can tell where men are men and boys are boys? Well, sort of. Sort of. <laughs> Not all. How many times have you lost the whole rig to a monster fish? Once. Once? What did you, you hook up? I don't know what it was. It was you know, big. Big. Yeah, it just stretched everything until it broke. Including your arms? <laughs> no. Have a, have, you have a rubber uh, bungee cord here in the middle, right? And toward the end. Right here. how we used to do it in the old days. Tie that around your waist? Oh. around that. That's the saddle horn of the horse, huh? Yep, that's it. Over the index finger? Yep. Keep pulling. Like that, right? Yep. There you go. I'll it comes tight? I'll pull, pull you down. When you feel them, they grab it. You, know? <laughs> you can't hold them, then you will win. <laughs> Come on, Big Blue. 
Andy Mill at his best right here. Hand lining. I like the test here. The test is about 600, six, 600 pounds. Yeah. 600 pound wire. The whole thing is to get the depths when the tide is running. You know? uh -huh. it takes a lot of computerized figuring out for this <laughs> stuff. You know, how much yeah. to use, when to use it. Yeah, this is a fishing sophistication at its best, right? Yep. Let's go. There you go. Woo! <laughs> That's great. I like this. Oh boy, that's the end of it. I like Four this. Those fly rods out. <laughs> Keep the fly rod for the flats. I like that hand line out here. This oh. is great. It comes tight in a big way, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. <laughs> I cannot imagine hooking a monster like this. A bass. Unbelievable. How wild is this? Reach right down, Andy, take a turn on the leader and whip them in. Put them behind you. That's it, put them behind you. Wow, what a fish. Woo! <laughs> you gotta give me five on that one. <laughs> you like that, oh, yes, huh? I love this. Look at that bad dog. <laughs> Go ahead, throw it, let them loose. Millstone with a striper and a headline. Woo, baby! That was a good sized fish. Put it back out. Let's go. <laughs> there he is. <laughs> Come on, baby. The only <laughs> thing you don't do is tie their feet together when you get them to the boat. <laughs> I've got a new purpose to work out now. Can you imagine, what's the biggest fish you've handlined? 50 pounds. 50, 50 pounds. Can you imagine, you know, handlining marlin or Look at or the size of that fish. Now watch. <laughs> Come on. Come on up. Come to Papa. Look at this dog. Woo! <laughs> I'm fishing with a ball bearing and a wig. <laughs> I got him. That's a 20 pound fish, huh? Close, yeah. That is great. Let me see him. Striper on a hand line. I came to Cape Cod to experience a new flats fishery and came away with a deeper appreciation for the importance of resource management. Striped bass were once all but wiped out of these waters, and their return is a poignant reminder that nature's bounty isn't limitless. I also made some new friends in Bob Luce and the Benson family, whose father-son passion for stripers led them to become the heart and soul of this fabulous new fishery.